One of the most beneficial archaeological resources we have is wine bottles. If there is something that shocks everyone when they begin to dive into archaeological reports, it's how much trash humans have always produced and how much we used to drink. So if I told you that we can often tell the age of a house excavated at the Jamestown colony based on shards from wine bottles, you probably would have many questions. Well, pour yourself a glass of your favorite red and strap in as we get to the bottom of this. The first question is, how do we know it's a bottle and not just some broken glass? If we are lucky, excavated bottles remain partially or fully intact. This is because goods were often buried by colonists to help preserve them or were placed in areas that prevented them from being crushed by the weight of eventual dirt and fill such as the inside of old stone wine racks. Barring the times where the glass is largely intact, archaeologists can identify bottles because they have mastered the art of reconstructing broken glass elsewhere. Excavations across the world turn up refuse pits, a rough equivalent to public trash cans of the pre-industrialized world. In these refuse pits, there are countless glass shards and artifacts that we can use to compare the types of glass used in wine bottles versus, say, windows or dinnerware. It is also important to note that glass manufacturing is incredibly difficult, localized, and was very inconsistent up until the late 1800s. Glass produced in different regions can be identified through their artisans' techniques and guilds' glass recipes. The techniques to create different types of bottles usually resulted in special hues of colors, warping, bubbles, and so on. In fact, the dark green glass still used in wine bottles today was the result of the vintner's desire to create glass that blocks the harsh sunlight which might spoil wine. The next question might be, how do we know it's a wine bottle? It can be quite difficult to assume that a bottle was used specifically for wine. One of the key hints you can use, a bottle's shape, might have been used indiscriminately for an apothecary's medicine or sauces or oils. That being said, it's important to contextualize that many commodities and industries had greater overlap in the past. It is very possible that your local apothecary was bottling wine to be administered as your medicine. Other beverages, such as gin, which was largely produced and procured by the Dutch Netherlands, at this time retained its own completely unique square bottle shape. Small chains or fiber cordage can be found alongside wine bottles, as these were used to tighten the cork in place and prevent any oxygen from entering the bottle which might turn the drink to vinegar, or, in the case with carbonated alcohols, such as champagne, to preserve that beautiful bubbly and prevent the cork from flying off prematurely. As global trade grew in the pre- and early modern era, wine became considered even more of a luxury good than it already was. The success of wine preservation methods mixed with the developing study of improving wine quality through aging meant that both merchants and buyers wanted to safeguard their expensive wines at all costs. Buyers would have wax seals placed over corks and onto bottles. These wax seals would occasionally indicate the year bottled and often had the owner's initials or monograms stamped into the wax so it was clear who owned the bottles. Colonists also had to pay heavy taxes and tariffs on importing alcohol. In the case of Jamestown, researchers have actually cross-referenced initials found on wine seals with contemporary property ownership records from the Virginia Company to link houses with specific people. One of the wax seals found at Jamestown also uses a monogram found on numerous salvaged wine seals that were damaged during the Great Fire of London in 1666, a shipment that sadly never made its way across the Atlantic. Lastly, you might ask, how do we know the age of a wine bottle? Obviously, excluding those rare lucky wax seals that have a date on them, there is actually an impressive chronology of the development of wine bottles throughout early modern Europe. 
The wine bottles of the late Renaissance, taking cues from the alembics used by apothecaries and alchemists, had bulbous bodies and long skinny necks. By the mid-1600s in England, the design became a bit more standardized and stout. However, the middle of the bottle still bowls out and comes to an elongated vertical neck. As the wine trade entered the early 1700s, the walls and bottom of the bottles began to become flatter. By the mid-1700s, the French definitely began to take the mantle as the most esteemed producers of luxury wines. Their methodology of a flat-sided bottle with a vertical inlet on the bottom has become the standard of quality wine bottle production, which still remains the standard today. This, of course, means that there are around 200 years where we can make educated connections between the age of a building and wine bottles found at the excavation site. But wait, how do we know wine glass was not just placed at a dig site later? How can you conclusively date a building just by one wine bottle? How do I know archaeology isn't just one big hoax? It's always good to hear skepticism. In reality, many dig sites do in fact have confusing and contradictory evidence that can span across various time periods. In Jamestown, there were pre-colonial burials found within feet of building foundations. Wine bottles from an array of centuries in buildings that were rebuilt or heavily altered over time. Archaeology is a science, and thus it uses the scientific method any argument that relies on just one piece of evidence does not make for a very compelling hypothesis. So we must combine wine bottle dating with other clues to reach a logical conclusion. These techniques include soil depth, chemical analysis, the discovery of currency, paper records, and especially building techniques and brick bonding styles. When you combine all of the evidence, then you can still only make estimates about a building's age. So while you might not be able to date a building by one wine bottle alone, you can actually come pretty close. If you enjoyed this video, please consider a like, share, or subscribe, and be sure to check out our website and Patreon in the description below for more Jamestown or VR history content.